in this video I will discuss how to generate a circuit that will represent the operation of a solar cell. We're going to use this using LTSpice. So in order to start I'm going to assume that you have LTSpice already open so you can go to File, Open, New Schematic and then we're ready to lay our circuit. The first thing I'm going to do is drop down a diode. The diode represents the PN junction of the solar cell and then we're going to bring a current source. If you're not there and you're looking for a current source and you can find it, you can just start spelling the word current. It'll show up, there's a current source there. And we're going to connect this current source in parallel with the diode and with its current flowing in the opposite direction to what the current would flow like if it was flowing through the diode, which means that I'm going to have to rotate this current source and I'm going to place it right next to the diode so we can then connect it in parallel to the diode. The last thing that I need to add to this circuit uh, that is important to model the solar cells that you're going to be working with in the lab is its series resistance. The series resistance represent uh, losses due to current that flows within the emitter of the solar cell, so it uh, usually uh, flows laterally from wherever it's generated towards the contacts and it also represents losses due to the contact resistance itself and the metal resistance as well. So all that is clumped into this single resistor and in a good uh, solar cell this is uh, in the order of a few milliohms. The last thing we're going to do is connect ground to our solar cell and I'm going to connect it such that the cathode of our diode is connected to ground. This way we will ensure that whenever there is a positive bias on this electrode of the cell we will have a uh, flow th or uh, a forward bias uh, diode in all cases. So first thing that we would like to do is then just check if this circuit works as we expected for a solar cell. So for example we could say Imagine that I have the solar cell illuminated. This particular solar cell uh, generates, let's say, uh, 3 amps of current. And un under a particular illumination, let's say 1 sun. And I would like to check its short circuit current. And so before I do any simulations, I also have to define the value of my series resistance. And as I said before, somewhere in the order of a few milliohms is reasonable. So. Uh, I'm going to put this as 10 milliohms. Now I'm talking about uh, relatively large solar cells like the one that you will be using in the lab which is half the size of a standard cell. So this is why the resistance is uh, so relatively small. If you're talking about very small cells then the resistance is going to be bigger. Finally we're not going to change any of the properties of the diode right now. We're just going to check how this behaves if um, we look for um, how the solar cell would um, act if we were, uh, for example, shorting it. So if we were to connect one of the electrodes to the other electrode of the solar cell, effectively we would be connecting it from one electrode to ground in this case. So what we expect to see is if this is the case, then the voltage um, across the diode is going to be so small that basically no current is going to flow or negligible current is going to flow through the diode and all the current that is coming into this node where the resistance and the diode joins all of that current is then going to flow through the resistor. So if we go and run a simulation for this we'll have to choose what type of simulation we want and I'm going to choose a DC operating point so I would just like to know what is happening in the cell when um, everything is as I have uh, typed on the values of the uh, parameters in the circuit. So let's see what happens. And so as you can see then the three amps coming from I1 uh, which is the current source are all going through resistor 1 and basically a negligible resistance is going through the diode. This is what we expected as we put the uh, cell in short circuit condition. Now if we were to disconnect the cell um, or basically have its uh, electrodes now open, what would happen is then the current once it, one, it comes over here 
to this node, then it has the option of going through the resistor or down the diode. Now, because there is, this is an open circuit, there is no uh, way for the current to flow out of the circuit uh, down to um, ground. So the other option for it to uh, choose is to go through the diode. So if all of this current is going through the diode, that's going to cause a um, voltage drop across the diode, and that effectively is the open circuit voltage. Now, because there is no current flow through this resistor in this case, then the voltage on this side of the resistor and the voltage on this side of the resistor are the same because there is no voltage drop. Therefore, the voltage that we would measure here is the open circuit voltage, which is the voltage across the diode. So let's see if this is the case. We'll just run it. And now we can see the current coming out of the current source. It's uh, still 3 amps but then there is no current flowing through the resistor as we expected. All of that current is now flowing through the diode. See, you can see that there's uh, roughly three amps going through that diode. And there's a little bit more current flowing through the diode that coming into the diode. And this is just a numerical inaccuracy because um, we've um, not made the simulator um, uh, accurate enough to go beyond, uh, in this case, what is it, five digits. Any case, the voltage that we see, as I pointed out before, the no connection uh, node, which is right here, has the same voltage as that that we see in the, uh, at the node where the diode and the uh, resistor and the current source uh, join. So this would be the open circuit voltage, and that would be the open circuit voltage that we would uh, measure if we were to use a voltmeter, for example. So we've seen that this circuit so far does roughly what we expected. It does show a short circuit current. It, show, it shows an open circuit. But what about its actual IV? Does it really look like a solar cell? So what we're going to do is we're going to try to generate an IV uh, current ver versus voltage uh, curve and see if this behaves at all like a solar cell. So there are many ways uh, to do this but what I'm going to do is choose to uh, connect a voltage source at the output of the cell right here. I'm going to bring it out a little further so mm, it's a little bit less messy. And what I'm going to do is vary the voltage uh, of, sorry, I didn't connect that voltage source. So I'm going to vary the voltage of this voltage source from zero to some value that I will choose. And I will see what happens to the current that flows in or out of this uh, vol uh, power supply. You can think of this as any voltage source that we would have in the lab where you can vary the voltage. And if you were to put an ammeter or if the uh, power supply has an indicator for current, you would just then plot the voltage that you're applying versus the current that is being measured and basically generate an IV. So what we're going to do then is change our uh, analysis now from an operating point and now we're going to do a DC sweep. So if you right click on that dot OP and then choose DC sweep, we are going to vary the voltage on V1. So V1 is here, and we're going to go from zero, so that's a short circuit condition, to about the open circuit voltage. And we saw the open circuit voltage was somewhere about uh, 0.86, so I'm going to go to 0.87, and I'm going to increment this in steps of one millivolt. So once you're ready, you can just simulate it. And there is a problem here. It says V1 is missing a value, and that was my mistake. So what I'm going to do is right-click on the power supply and say zero. It, it can be any value, actually, uh, because it gets over, uh, overwritten by the simulation. So we're going to uh, run the simulation again, and we're going to plot then the current going um, into the power supply uh, versus the voltage that we measure, which is V1. So right here on the x-axis, the uh, variable that we measure, uh, that we varied is already plotted. So anything that you plot is going to be uh, versus that particular variable. So I'm going to plot the current here. And as you can see, 
the current is positive and that is just consistent with the way the uh, little uh, current probe is as you can see on the circuit the current probe is pointing from the positive to the negative and if the current is flowing from the positive to the negative side of the power supply then that would appear positive in our plot and so that's exactly what we see and then we see this is consistent there's three amps that's uh, what we know is a short circuit current and then as we increase the voltage eventually the current starts to decrease and goes to open circuit you can always find what the open circuit voltage is by uh, clicking on the variable here IV1 and then moving your cursor and open circuit voltage as we said before means no current flow so if I go and look for current zero and you can see here that's pretty close to zero that would be um, one way of finding uh, close to the um, open circuit voltage okay so so far so good this looks like a solar cell and um, we would wonder does it actually generate power well one way to check is if we were to plot IV which is the current going into the power supply times the voltage uh, uh, of V1 then we can see this is now power and you can see uh, this particular solar cell generates close to 2 watts you can grab your cursor and go over there 2.16 watts roughly and where the uh, power is maximum that's what we call the maximum power point the voltage at which this occurs is the uh, voltage at maximum power point and then we would need to uh, find out what the current is then if we were to plot now uh, the IV but we're going to leave that for the next uh, exercise so now that we know that this behaves like a solar cell we would like to um, represent any solar cell not this solar cell that has 870 ish uh, open circuit voltage but rather a more realistic cell like the one you will be working uh, uh, in the lab with and um, which would have somewhere between six six hundred and fifty millivolts so what determines the open circuit in this particular um, um, schematic would be in part the short circuit current but most strongly would be the saturation current of the diode so what we would like to do is change the property of that diode so that we can establish uh, or 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 um, dictate what the saturation current is so in order to change the properties of the diode what you're going to do is right click on it sorry that's not right click um, you can click on the D and change that to whatever you want so we're going to call this um, diode solar cell for example click there now if we were to run now a simulation what's going to happen is going to say I have no idea what diode SC means so I'll just run it so you can see it and it says yes I cannot find the definition for diode SC so you're going to say okay well I now have to define it in order to do that you need to come here to the dot op um, uh, directive and you're going to type the command dot model and then you're going to say I'm going to refer to diode solar cell it's actually not k sensitive so you could do this all in um, capital or uh, lowercase then we're going to say well this is a diode so D defines uh, tells spies that we're going to use a model of the diode for this thing that we call diode SC and diode SC could be anything it could be XYZ it could be uh, my name your name whatever you want so after the uh, letter D now spice is going to look for parameters that it knows are related to a diode and in spice IS represents this so uh, the saturation current and we're going to say let's say that saturation current is 1 e minus 10 and so we're going to say yep that's okay and then make sure then that you drop that command that you just created somewhere on the circuit it doesn't matter where it is I'm just going to put it underneath and just for fun let's save this just in case we lose um, the uh, this file 
So I'm going to call it the uh, diode uh, solar cell. Okay, so we're ready now to simulate. So if um, the saturation current effectively changes the open circuit voltage, then we may see a um, change in what the open circuit voltage is. Uh, now that I've changed the saturation current. The reason I say may is because we don't know at this point what the default value was for IS. I can tell you that it's 1 times 10 to the minus 14, so we're going to definitely going to see a difference. So one way to go about it would be, for example, if we say, well, let's um, um, now do a sweep again, but I'm going to plot the current versus the voltage just to make things easier. So I'm going to double click here, you go back to your short, uh, sorry, your IV, and what I'm going to do is um, sweep again. So you can see now we have still 3 amps for the short circuit current, which is what we expected because we haven't changed the value of the um, photo generated current. However, as you move along and you go towards zero uh, amps, which would be open circuit, now you can see the open circuit voltage is close to 625 millivolts. So what I'm going to do now is extract a few parameters uh, of the solar cell based on its IV. So now that I know that it's close to 625, I'm not going to sweep so far, so I'm just going to go to 0.6. Um, let's say 3. I'm going to sweep it again, so now it's we have um, the IV basically in the region of interest. Now you see this is the open circuit voltage. So many times we want to analyze an IV and we want to do this on more than one cell, for example, and it would be great if we could uh, find the open circuit voltage, for example, or the maximum power point more or less automatically uh, when we do the simulation. So I'm going to show you the uh, use of the dot measure command and, um, and let's see how we can use it. So for example, we're going to say I would like to find and so you do, you, you type the, um, the command dot measure so we would like to find, for example, the uh, short circuit current. So we're going to look for I of V1, and that would be, uh, sorry, we need to define first what we want to find out. So uh, let's start with the short circuit current. So ISC, and we're going to call that, uh, or that's going to be, um, we wanted to find the current going through the uh, V1 source uh, when the voltage, and that's when uh, V1 equals zero. So let's see what happens. Make sure that you drop that there. Let's save it and run it. So when we do that, apparently nothing changed. But if you press Control L, there you see you get your calculation given to you. So that's ISC is 3, and it says, yep, that's at 0 volts, the current is 3. Other things that we could do then, for example, would be find the open circuit voltage. So to add another line on the um, command window, you have to press Control and then Enter, and then type again measure. And so we're going to find VOC. In this case, is the voltage, so find V1 when, and in this case is IV1 is zero. So we run it again, press Control L, and then you see, now we know what the open circuit voltage is. Last thing I can show you is then how I would uh, find the power, the maximum power uh, generated by this uh, cell. So we're going to add yet one more command, and the command here, remember, control, enter, dot, measure. And in this case, we're going to find mm, maximum power point. And in this case, it would be find. And what we want to find is the product of V1 times I1, 
and find the maximum of it. So we're going to do um, find, actually, we don't need to, to find anything. We just go to um, the max of i v sorry i v one times v one and that will basically be it so we run it again we press control l and you can see now this cell generates 1.476 uh, watts when it's in maximum power point it has an open circuit voltage of 0.623 and a short circuit current of 3 amps. We're going to stop here and in another video I will show you how you can do even more fun stuff with LT Spice.